what is a dormant company under companies act 2013 the very word dormant company the word dormant makes us feel that why would a concept which is dormant that is dormant is it's associated with the word like sleeping slumber or inactive so why would the companies act of 2013 dedicate one full section section 455 for dormant companies so let us try to understand what is this dormant company and why it is important for us so a dormant company can be incorporated or an existing company can be made a dormant company for various purposes for example one if it wants to have a future project that is now they don't want to start any business but future they want to have any project so they can incorporate uh, and keep it inactive the second possibility is if they want to own any intellectual property right this was very practical problem for foreign companies that is when they wanted to hold an intellectual property for example a trademark or a patent or even a copyright they had to incorporate a company in India regardless of having any business or not just to hold that asset so the problem they used to face is that they used to uh, compulsorily have to comply with all the other sections of companies act which was really not necessary for them and the other option for dormant companies is if the companies want to hold any asset but not do any business there was no option so the section 455 of companies act gives the option where a company can be called as a dormant company so here for us to understand what is a dormant company even guidance has been given in the act itself what they say is that any company which does not have a significant accounting transaction is a dormant company so they have defined significant accounting transaction so basically any accounting transaction apart from point number one fees paid to ROC that is accounting transaction when you pay fees to ROC that's an accounting transaction or any cost incurred for compliance under companies act or any other law prevalent in India and the third thing is that allotment of shares when you allot shares accounting transaction happens and the fourth one the fourth one is with respect to any other maintenance costs for the company or for the office records of the company so if any of these transactions happen it is allowed that is it is not a significant accounting transaction and therefore it is allowed and the company can be called as a dormant company but if there is any accounting transaction apart from these four which we just discussed then it will be called as a significant accounting transaction and this company cannot enjoy the status of a dormant company so what is the uh, status which it can enjoy so primarily the compliance requirements are much lesser compared to other kind of companies I'll give you one small example for instance a dormant company has to hold only two board meetings in a year as compared to four board meetings for other kind of companies so if they hold one board meeting in one half of the calendar year January to June and July to December one meeting each they just have to ensure that there should be 90 days minimum 90 days gap between these two meetings you cannot have you cannot have a meeting let us say on 30th of June that is in the first half of the ca calendar year and July 1st though it is uh, though it is compliant with the condition of having a meeting in one half of the calendar year it is not compliant with gap of 90 days so this is one example where the compliance is lesser for dormant companies and also for dormant companies it is easier it is easier for them to file the forms because there are certain specific forms which are not applicable for other companies for compliance requirements then the same concept of dormant company can be understood in two aspects that is how can you become a dormant company one possibility is where you that is the company the company applies to the ROC the company applies to the ROC asking for the status of dormant company where the ROC takes the necessary papers produces the papers and then gives a certificate saying that from now on your company is a dormant company the second option is 
which is not very uh, very good news or not a happy thing for companies is that if the roc finds if the roc finds that a company is not carrying on business for 2 years or it is not filing the necessary balance sheet pnl documents to the roc's office then this roc's office can make uh, can give the status of dormant company to the company which is not filed so it happens suo moto by the roc or alternative the company itself can apply for dormant company status a dormant company further can become a active company it is not necessary that once you are dormant you are always dormant it can become active company again so this was a brief understanding of what is dormant company and there are many more provisions but a brief understanding is whatever we discussed now